Okay, so good evening again. Um, I'm Greta Peoples, who is a, a graduated out of the Central New Jersey chapter, and it is my pleasure this evening to introduce to you who are really the true stars of, of, the, of the night, and that um, those individuals are Cynthia Bell, um, again, who is the president of the Columbia, Maryland um, chapter, Jack and Jill, and then Toy Ward, who is um, a former president of the Central New Jersey chapter of Jack and Jill, among her other many uh, uh, roles in the region. So what I'm going to do is just sort of kick it off by having both of them give a little bit about their background, who they are, their chapters, and the experience that they've had in Jack and Jill. And if you also just want to give maybe a little demographic information about the chapter, so how many mothers do you have, how many teens do you have, um, et cetera. So, um, Cynthia, I'll start with you. Good evening, uh, mothers. It's so nice to see everybody on here. Uh, when Greta texted me, I was like, oh, automatically, of course, Greta, whatever you want, I will do. She's Greta is an angel. Um, she was in our chapter a while ago. Go, but her lasting impact still lives on. She was an outstanding, outstanding program director. She's so, so creative. I mean, you would not believe the invitations, the activities, and everything that she did uh, for our children. So I'm here for Greta, whatever you want. And of course, I'm happy to share any information that I have with the mothers on this call. Uh, when I moved to Columbia in 2005, I came from, I was initiated in the um, Columbus, Georgia chapter of Jack and Jill. So I was not initiated in the Columbia chapter, but we started in 2003. So I've been in for a while. I have four beautiful children. Uh, one um, is going to be a senior at Hampton and one will be a freshman at Hampton. Then I have two younger babies. Um, my baby number three will be a freshman in high school and my baby son, uh, I still can't believe it, is going to the eighth grade. So I have been in Jack and Jill for a while. I still have a little ways to go, um, but I'm loving this ride, loving the uh, time that my children have, have spent in the organization and I too love the organization. Our chapter is large. So this past year we had 103 mothers. Uh, our teen group is just as large. Uh, we usually range between 60, uh, no, usually about 55. I think, Greta, when you were there, it was around 55, 60. Yeah, uh, teens. This year, we're going to have 73 teens. So it's a large group. And, you know, I'll talk a little bit more about how we manage the size of that. Um, and, you know, once they get to the teen group, it's, <clears throat> that's when they start to have the fun and make the uh, last, lifelong relationships in, in the teen group. Okay. And then next we have Toy from the Central New Jersey chapter. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me, first of all. And um, I, too, will do whatever Greta asked me to do. I had the distinct pleasure of having her as my corresponding secretary when I was president, and she completely revolutionized the chapter, and we're still using all the stuff that she did today. I have been a member of Jack and Jill. This is my 15th year in Jack and Jill. I have, in my last, my 15th and my last year in Jack and Jill, I have one son that graduated out who is working as an attorney and my youngest son will be a senior this year. He is currently the teen president of our chapter. In my capacity in Jack and Joe, my tenure, I've been age group lead, audit chair, five star chair, um, corresponding secretary, vice president and president. So hopefully I'll have kind of a breadth of experience to share from. I've been in the chapter since we had 34 members. We currently have 62 and we have 36 teens, 17, I just wrote it down here, uh, 17 boys and 19 girls. So that's where we are currently. And Cynthia, what, uh, what's the split like in the Columbia chapter in terms of boys uh, versus girls? That is a good question. I think Usually it, it ebbs and flows. 
this past year, I think we were um, were we boy heavy? We were boy heavy this past year. And I think next year is going to be girl heavy. Okay. A little bit more um, girls and boys for this next year. Okay. So that's a challenge, you know, trying to find activities to get the boys to come to. Because I always find it's harder to get them engaged. The girls are going to come regardless. But the boys, it's kind of hard to get them engaged and keep them engaged. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do, and um, um, for all of you, all the mothers from the San Diego chapter, I greatly appreciate that you sent your questions in advance. Um, and just to um, sort of keep the conversation flowing and make sure we cover everything, I thought what would just be easy is if we go straight down uh, the list, and then we'll just sort of go from there. So the first one was to talk about sort of structurally how you all are set up. Um, and so the first question was around uh, the teen advisors and how you go about doing your um, training. And I'll even add, how do you go about doing your selection? So um, because a lot of times chapters have different processes as to how they do their selection of the teen advisors, how long do your teen advisors serve, and then how, uh, what training, if any, uh, do your teen advisors uh, receive? So why don't we start with that first? Toy, why don't you kick off for Central New Jersey? Um, sure, so I had to get up for a minute and go through something with my son, but the teen advisors. Our teen advisor, the our teen advisors and How many were, do you have? Let me ask that too. Oh, two, I'm sorry. We have two teen advisors. One that's the lead teen advisor and one assistant teen advisor. However, the way our teen group is set up is that mothers take lead on certain aspects of the teen, um, of the teen activities. So like a committee, right? So there's a mother in charge working with the social committee, a mother that's working head of teen conference, a mother that's head of Christmas party. So although there's two main teen advisors, we usually have about five moms that are kind of working the whole teen group. Mm -hmm. And then talk about how, how are those selected? How do those teen advisors come to be? So the president <laughs> selects the teen. <laughs> the president selects the teen advisors. Let me get the, the stuff off my throat from I know, I know. <laughs> I mean, ladies, um, you know, after 15 years, this is, I understand. Um, transition and transformation of chapter. So teen advisors are selected by the president. Uh, it is usually comes by a recommendation from the former teen advisors who can kind of tell them which mothers have been engaged or who they think um, might be best fit for the role. The is, that, is that a bylaw or or is that a, a process that you guys use? And then maybe Cynthia, they have a different process. So for us, it's not a bylaw because in our bylaws, our committees are set up. The teen mm -hmm. advisor sits on the programming committee. The assistant teen sits on all age group leads. So the age group leads sit on programming, the assistants sit on um, membership. And so we do a letter of intent every year and when we do that letter of intent in March of each year for the coming year, if you're interested in being an age group lead or assistant lead, you sign up. And then the president then chooses who she feels like is best based upon that. So she's not kind of picking from air, I should have said that. Um, okay. But most of the time, you're voluntold. Like Greta was also my assistant team um, advisor one year, and you know, I've really asked her to do it for me. So it, it does happen. It doesn't necessarily happen in a vacuum in that way. Thank you. Okay. And Cynthia, what about for Columbia? So for us, since we're so large, we have to have, we have to have to have uh, four teen advisors. And um, this next year, I don't see why, you know, we probably need five because it's a lot of work um, with the teen group 
first of all, just because they meet so frequently. And then, as you know, Jack and Jill require so much paperwork and so many, you know, you got to meet these modules, you got to fill out this form, you got to do this, you got to do that. It's a lot of uh, legwork and organization. So we actually need moms that will uh, take ownership of this. And um, like Toy I, the, our uh, advisors are selected by the president. You want to pick teen advisors that are going to do the work. You run into a lot of um, moms who just want to do it just to oversee what the kids are doing. And, you know, that's not the right reason for becoming a teen advisor. You almost, as a teen advisor, you know, you have to have the best interest of the group, not just the interests of your child. So you have to find a person, a good, strong people to lead the team group. And you also have to have those expectations for those advisors set up and laid out in advance. So not only do they know what they're doing, but the moms know what they're doing. Because, you know, a chapter our size, we have so many moms that, you know, feel like that they can do this, they can do that. No, that's not your job. Somebody else has that to do as a job. So if you know you set up the expectations, everybody knows what they're doing, um, then there won't be any confusion. So with our 14 advisors, they each have a job. So for example, we have a team board. I think Reddy, you were asking how are your teams elected? So the teams are elected by you know, that, you know, there's a slate of candidates, they present um, the slate, they give speeches, and then they're voted upon. And then that's how we get our team um, executive board. And so we vote for, you know, the top five positions, and then the rest are appointed by the team president. And so um, the team advisors there uh, are split, they basically split the job by you know, one person, one teen advisor will follow the president and the vice president, and they kind of set up the meetings and, you know, discuss, um, you know, who's going to be giving um, the module presentations. So that's the way that we, we have one teen advisor that kind of works with the president and vice president in terms of the meeting, um, the, the meat of what they're going to be doing. And then another one, we ha actually have uh, our, in our chapter a second vice president, and the second vice president is over fundraising. So we have one of the teen advisors that works with the second VP for fundraising. So that's you know, another teen advisor job that you work specifically with the second VP for fundraising to come up with um, good solid fundraisers that the teens can do. Then uh, another teen advisor works with the correspondence because that's a big thing, you know, getting information out to the moms. And then that person works with the teen uh, corresponding secretary and um, the teen recording secretary to get information out to the teens. So we, you know, our teens are working on their own independently, but they have the uh, teen advisors that kind of follow them and make sure, you know, that things don't fall through the cracks because they're kids and they're busy too. So that's how, kind of how we set up the jobs. Um, and in terms of teen conference, we kind of, everybody has a job. Um, you know, one teen advisor does the, the banner and the um, display, then another one will take on the scrapbook, and then another does what, um, the apparel. So, you know, with the four, we kind of split it up like that. And um, that's kind of how we break everything up uh, in terms of jobs and responsibilities. I think we've got any other questions? Yeah, so look, I want to go back to something that you mentioned because I know that was on their question. You talked about the fact that the teens have um, um, a lot of meetings and I do want to go back to making sure that you guys that they answered the questions in terms of how structurally the teen advisors set up but you mentioned that they have a lot of meetings so what's the meeting schedule for your senior teen group and is your senior teen group 9 through 12 because one thing I want to always make sure every chapter divides their age groups up differently so I want to make sure that when we're saying senior teens, are we both talking about ninth to 12th graders? I'm assuming that's how it's set up in San Diego. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's so, the same. Yeah, we have a junior teen group. That's our middle schoolers, our six, seven, and eights. And then our senior teen group is our, our high schoolers. So our high schoolers, our senior teens meet monthly. So they have a monthly meeting, then they have a monthly activity. And so, what, that day, what day do they meet? So they always meet on Sundays. So we set aside, it's the third Sunday of the month. 
you know, it's standard. They meet from four to six. So they know third Sunday of the month, four to six team meeting. And then the, usually the activity fluctuates, but it's always going to be on a Sunday. Um, and we meet, you know, after church. So it's after one o'clock for the activities. Uh, and I think some of the activities, they flip flop. It could either be on a Saturday or a Sunday, um, but throughout the year for the activities, but the meeting is standard. It's the third Sunday, four to six. So we keep that standard and that's monthly. And then they have a monthly activity. So like for the month of December, you know, that activity is a chapter wide holiday party, you know, for September it's um, Jack and Jill day for May, you know, the activity is um, black family day. So all those other months, there is a, a team only activity. And the activities, I just want to clarify, they're not all, even though the meetings are every third <clears throat> Sunday of the month, the activity does not necessarily precede or proceed the meeting. They, they, they're usually separate from the meeting dates. Separate from the meeting dates, the activities are. And our teen executive board generally meets before the um, general body on that Sunday. Okay. Like an hour or two before that meeting. And when you do community so, service, is that like an activity or is that something that's incorporated on top of your meeting and your activity? We do both. So some, some months it's, you know, community service only activity. And then for some months when they're doing, you know, something like a recreational activity, we, we have each month our chapter has a chapter wide community service. So the senior team that month would do the chapter wide um, service activity for that month. Okay. okay, thank you. And then for Central New Jersey. Uh, I think Francis, uh, I think Francis has a question. Sorry, were you, were you talking Francis? Can't, we still can't hear you. Can We can't hear you. Yeah, it's something with her um, audio. Somebody can just Te text her. Text me Actually, if you can. You're driving though, so I don't want you to text. Actually, her audio should be working now. Francis? Oh, no. It's showing that her audio is on, so I'm not sure why we can't hear her. Maybe it's through her car or something. She's our, our lead teen advisor, so that's why I, oh, I, I okay. interrupted because I, I know that she has very specific questions around this topic that she wants to get out. Okay. Go ahead, since we can't hear. <laughs> so we do. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Francis. Okay. Oops. Hold on. Hold on. There you go. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. It was the Bluetooth. I was connected to Bluetooth. That was the issue. Um, okay. So, in terms of your um, your officers. For your teens, do you have a foundation chair? Is that an elected position within your chapter? We do. So we have a foundation chair and it is appointed by the president. Okay, so it's not an elected position, but it's an appointed position. I think in our bylaws, ladies, um, we have a foundation chair, but that's a committee. We also have in our, by, in our chapter bylaws, um, community service is also a committee. Just so you guys know. Okay. So, and so um, in your chapter, is it? Our, our chapter is the exact same. We have a teen foundation chair, and that person is appointed by the teen president. Okay. okay. That's helpful. Thank you. Great. Toy, you were going to go ahead and say. Yeah, because I, I want to share a couple of the differences that from Sister New Jersey to Columbia in the teen group. So, our teens, the structure is we have our officers. But we don't have, I mentioned that we only have the two teen advisors and then we have mothers that are specific to, so similar to what they're talking about, someone who's in charge of social, someone who helps the kids with whatever, but the specific officers on the board are paired up with the mother officer uh, for their office. So the teen president works with the mother president, but, you know, vice president, so forth and so on. So that's the mentoring that happens from um, the officer standpoint, it's not within the teen, it's not within the teen advisors, it's the actual officers. That's part of your duty as a mother officer. Our teens meet, have a set time, the third Sunday of every month. But what's interesting is that our teens don't do separate activities unless they are um, separate age group activities like the younger kids do. 
So what our teams do is do, they have their meeting. The e-board meets first. I think it starts around 2.30. The e-board meets first. Then they have their general body meeting. And then they just have socialized time. And so they socialize together. And that's their kind of activity for the month. So they just meet that one time in the month. Now, when we have chapter-wide activities, which we have the opening picnic for Jack and Jill Day, you know, the, the holiday party, Martin Luther King service, Black Family Day, and Black History Month, they participate as an age group, usually helping the mothers. So we usually have them do something with the younger kids during those activities. So for instance, they run the Christmas party uh, fundraiser. So one of their big fundraisers every year is the 50-50 at our Christmas party. So they work the Christmas party. They do activities with the little kids at the Christmas party. So those are their activities. Then they have separate community service activities, but they're not regularly scheduled. They're not necessarily um, once a month. So they don't, unlike the younger kids, they don't have a separate activity every month. They're meeting and working through their modules for team conference that's their activity. Interesting. And you talked about, um, uh, Tully, how the uh, elected officers are paired up with the elected off with the respective elected officers and the mother's group. In terms of the incoming teens to the group, are there, is there any type of mentoring or pairing up of the um, eighth graders that are soon to be ninth graders coming into the, um, uh, into the group? Yeah, so we started doing that some um, a few years ago, and it works very well. So as a part of graduation each year, we do a step up of the eighth graders, and the current teens welcome the eighth graders into the teen group as a part of graduation. You graduate into the teen group, and at that point, they are paired with another teen, usually a sophomore or a junior, so not someone who had just gotten there and not someone who's focused on graduating. So usually a sophomore or junior is paired with the freshman, the incoming eighth grader freshman to, for them to mentor each other and for questions during meetings and guide. And then we tend to put them on the same committees as well so that they're together in um, team committee. Okay. And Cynthia, is that, what do you all do in Columbia? to? That's a great idea. I wrote that down. That's something that I wanted our chapter to do last year, but I think everybody was just so busy, but uh, it didn't come to fruition because we, last year we had a fairly large incoming class uh, as well. And lots of times, you know, as kids get older, you know, they kind of fall through the cracks. And that's something that I did not want to have to happen with our teens because they look for other things to do uh, on a Sunday afternoon as opposed to coming to Jack and Jill. But I do um, like the mentoring piece. I think they all should have some type of accountability. If it's just a text, you know, hey, are you coming to the meeting? You know, will I see you this afternoon at the Christmas party? Um, just something to have um, to keep people, keep the teens engaged. I think that's great. Okay. Cynthia, you also mentioned something a little earlier when you were talking about the roles and expectations of the advisors and um, wanting to make sure that you have mothers who are going to work for the good of the whole and not work for the good of their child. So can you talk a little bit about how, how do you all sort of work through that? How do you manage mothers to, that uh, may still have that tiger mom mentality and don't wanna let things go? How do you, are, is that an issue I should say first? And if so, how do you sort of manage that? Well, I think the, the big thing that we do to manage that is just to let people know up front. So especially those eighth grade moms that are coming in who've gone and set every activity like this, when you move to ninth grade, you're not going to be doing that. So we let them know up front that this is the teen group. The teens run the activities with the help of their teen advisor. So we don't really have a whole lot of that because we tell them in advance, you know, it's drop off. You come back at six o'clock to pick your teen up. So you have to set that expectation early just so they, so that they know this is the teen group. You know, the moms really don't have anything to do with it unless you're a teen advisor. 
So you kind of let, let them know early. And that's the way that we kind of manage that. And then they know, you know, you know, they may talk to amongst each other in uh, August and September. Oh, why can't we go? Why can't we go? They find out, you know, by October, November, they've got it. You know, it's all under control. So just let them know early. Okay. So we don't, by policy and procedure, allow mothers at the teen meetings unless you are um, one of the teen advisors or the mother that's hosting for the month. So we, um, we, our teens meet, we meet in homes, you know, in each parent's home. So mothers sign up at the beginning of the year during the planning meeting, we sign up for who's going to host. And in that, that's who's there. So if you are a mother, you know, it's part of, it's in our policies and procedures. So it keeps us from, like you were saying in Columbia, um, having, have to, having to have tough conversations with moms who may be a little more, it's just the policy. Um, that that's the way we do things. The other policy we have is that if you are a senior mom, um, if you are a mother of a senior, you can't be a teen advisor um, because you, you have a lot to focus on for teen conference because one of the things that was happening is a senior mom would sign up to be teen advisor so she could go to teen conference for free. <laughs> and so that's, we, you, you know, that, that was happening quite, and then you're focused on your, you're seeing you're graduating, you're not focused on all of the other children. So you cannot be a teen advisor if you are a first time freshman mom. You cannot be a teen advisor if you are a senior mom. Um, if, you, if you have a freshman but you've already been in the teen group once before, then you can uh, be the teen advisor. But we do not permit mothers to come. It is, it's strictly, um, strictly drop off. If the teen moms need to meet, the teen advisor will have a separate meeting with the teen moms. And with our two teen advisors, what usually happens is that the lead teen advisor works with the kids, the assistant teen advisor works with the moms. So she takes lead with the moms, so the communication, whatever you need from the moms, logistics, all of those things, this, the assistant teen does that, and the lead teen advisor is focused on uh, the kids. And one thing I want to point out that, um, again, just, um, because I've had the experience in all of these different chapters, what's interesting demographically about um, Columbia versus Central New Jersey, Columbia, and um, um, Cynthia, please correct me if I'm wrong, but in, um, uh, in Columbia, there's only really one county that comprises the Columbia chapter. So you have 103 families but 103 families are literally within a 10 or 15 mile radius of each other. Mm. So the ability to drop your kids off and leave is, if the kid doesn't drive him or herself, is a very practical thing to do. In central New Jersey, it spans across, I don't know, five, six, seven, four. Four counties. Four, four counties. Four counties. So theoretically, you can't get anywhere to any activity um, within 30, 45 minute commute. And the year that I was um, the assistant teen advisor, my, house, my home, which is actually where we had all of the meetings, where at my home, is probably the furthest off the grid than everybody else. So the situation that we were running into is a parent, if I've driven 45 minutes to bring my kid here, I'm not going home and then coming back. And so going back to what Toy said, we would, for those mothers who for whatever reason had to drop their kids off, but to also sort of keep the policy of, but you can't be at the meetings, we would do a little mother social. And I had a basement, so we would do a mother social in my basement while the teens were meeting um, upstairs. So, and I think, um, Angelique, if you, uh, if I remember correctly, San Diego is pretty much in that same situation. You're the radius of where all the mothers live is pretty vast. So I don't know if that's um, an issue that you all come up with, but just something to take into consideration, um, you know, if you're trying to. Sort of yeah, Greta, I, I, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, go ahead. I was go gonna ahead. say that the, the thing that we do right now, I thank you for mentioning that, because I forgot, because I said, you know, I was focused on the kids, but what we do do because of that, because we don't want the moms in the house, because even if the moms are in the house, if, if, the teen, if there's a ruckus with the teens, the moms wanna go. We actually do plan offsite things for the teen moms during the teen meetings. So we started doing that a couple of years ago, not this year, but a couple of years ago, where during the teen meetings, the moms who wanna drop off, 
we meet for happy hour, we go have appetizers. One time we went to a movie. So we are doing things so that we can bond as team moms during that time. Thank you for saying that because I, you're right, I forgot. That's a really, really great point that you guys brought up because I would say the majority of our team moms are within, you know, 10, 15, 30 minutes. Myself and maybe a couple of other team moms are probably the 45 minutes away. Um, so I think that's really helpful and also a good way for us to create some um, connection and um, between the team moms, which we desperately need right now. Yeah. So one of the other questions that was asked regarding the off the teen officers um, duties and making sure that they are actually executing the duties for which they were elected or appointed how do they how do your teens officers do that is there some type of um, teen officer training um, once they are elected or appointed how is that how do you all ensure that these individuals are in fact fulfilling the roles and expectations that um, that they uh, were elected to do? So I'll, I'll speak to that since I was the assistant um, the past couple of years. Um, so honestly, in the past few years, we have not done any type of um, officer training. And so this year, um, my goal is, and I've already started this process, is that they will work with um, Um, the mother officers. So the treasurer will work with the current treasurer, um, et cetera, et cetera. And, and, and so that's what we'll be implementing this year. So which would be similar to Central New Jersey and what they are currently yeah. doing. Um, Cynthia, what about Columbia? Well, you know, I really, I think on paper, we're supposed to be doing that as well, but it works out that the um, teens, work with the teen officers, and then if there are questions and they ask the uh, appropriate mother member. But next year I'm excited because our teen treasurer is the son of our chapter treasurer. So <laughs> all under one roof, the treasurers uh, go. But you know, they don't actually have training. They go by what's in our uh, chapter bylaws and they ran knowing you know, exactly what they were getting into, their expectations, their list of duties are all, all printed in our bylaws so and then the, the uh, teen advisors make sure that they're doing everything that they're supposed to be doing in terms of their duties um, I think one of the questions was, do we charge we don't we don't charge the teens if they are doing something that they're not supposed to be doing we actually have the situation this year where our teen president is the daughter of our actual president who is Jonay in yellow <laughs> <laughs> There you go. Trace. But what Jone says is that her daughter is pretty much on top of it. She's had she is. to graduate and she just does her own thing. She does. She wakes me up when she needs help. So she's definitely using using me to that capacity. Good, good, good. So what I'm thinking, I want to go ahead and talk about, um, because one of the topics that seemed uh, pretty big when Angelita and I were talking were these modules. And um, talk just about sort of, I don't know how many there are now, it feels like there were like 28, 33 or something like that when I was there. I don't know if they have simplified or, or what they've done with those, but can you guys just talk a little bit about the modules specifically around how do you guys sort of do that? How do you track it? And how do you accomplish knocking out all of the modules that they are required to do within a program year? So we do something called module mania. And did we start that when you were here, Greta? I think it was after. It was after. Um, that we started doing module mania. So the, ki the kids were used to winning when they went to teen conference and then we had a fuzzy year or something. And so we're like, all right, we need to formalize this. And so as a part of the planning meeting, we choose which modules for each of those meetings that are the team meetings monthly, they do certain amount of modules each month. The mother members, um, whether you're a teen mom or not, if you have an expertise in one of the modules, for instance, I always do goal setting. I did it when I was president, vice president. I always do goal setting. I'm doing it now. Like, so there's always a mom who, whatever her thing is, the accountant does the financial literacy, the lawyer comes in and does advocacy, but we make sure that they are getting those modules done throughout the year so that right before teen conference, they're not in a rush. 
And we do that called module mania. And so in like the December meeting, we will choose a lot of the modules don't, don't have a lot to do with them and they'll do them all at once. The other thing we have done, which we won't be able to do this year because of COVID-19, is a retreat. And we did, I think, Greta, we did that when you were here, right? We did, we do a retreat and we take the kids off site to, you know, a campground, a, a, some kind of wonderful retreat place in the woods. And we go through modules uh, for 24 to 48 hours. Sometimes we'll spend the night, sometimes we'll come back uh, for two days. But that we're really, really focused on it so that when you get close to team conference, you're more focused on the actual team conference execution as opposed to the modules. And how did you track that? What did you, did you have a spreadsheet that says, okay, these are the modules we're gonna do and these are the kids who actually completed these modules along with that? Like, how did you? So we do, so all the kids do all the modules. All the kids do. Um, and so they have, at Central New Jersey, we are like, serious about team conference and so we don't we don't pick and choose the modules we actually do do all the modules our goal is to always get I think there's what 34 now mm -hmm. um, is to get them done but here's the thing pick choose activities that are aligned with more than one module do you know what I mean like so you don't have to have to do 34 different activities you know so we started picking things so I think Greta, that year you were here, like they at that retreat they went zip lining, which fixed some, which was one thing. I did a vision board, which was something. So so that you can check off three or four of those modules each month, or you know, or more. So that's that's the way we do it. Every kid does every module though. And just I mean, the retreat is really a great opportunity to. Not, we really knocked out like sixteen or. 17 of the modules just in that all day retreat because we had actually worked with the facilitator at the campsite where we held it we showed her you know here are the things that we need to accomplish we need you to create activities that sort of meet with that and so there was a back and forth sort of she would send a program plan we'd say yes or tweet this and then we would add in wherever she was unable to create a program that we thought legitimately um, met that, we would bring in other mothers or fathers to do the modules to fill in that gap. But those retreats, you can literally get 20 oh, yeah. something modules done in one really strong, um, strongly planned retreat. Okay, thank you. We basically do the same thing, but we call ours our module madness. So we set aside one day where we um, knock out a bunch of modules um, in one, the course of one day. And then those that we don't do during that module madness, we do, you know, during our meetings. So we incorporate, we have speakers to come in and um, do the various um, modules. Now you asked about tracking it. I think it, ideally it probably should be on a spreadsheet somewhere, but we just do the attendance so we take the attendance okay so we say you know we did this module for this meeting so we know these teens did this particular module that's why we track it by the attendance sheets um this year we started something new with our mother members that signing in on ipads and laptops so i uh, hopefully next year the teens will start to do that as well that way you can track it a little bit easier and it's more it's already typed up because at the end of the year you know getting ready for teen conference you have to report who did what um and report that back to the region um for you know module completion so it just keeps it a little bit easier if it's already on the computer instead of hand writing it out and as you're doing your modules are teams groaning about it or because it's incorporated into fun activities you pretty much don't have a lot of pushback yeah, we don't have a lot of pushback. Um, okay. you know, we kind of incorporate it into the meeting or to an, an activity. So, you know, there is no pushback pretty much. Okay. Um, okay, so let me just stop here. Did you guys have any, um, from the San Diego chapter, any uh, questions about the modules that they haven't covered already? I just wanted to ask one more thing. Um, is it Toy? Toy yes. Toy, okay. Um, 
Okay, so I just wanted to clarify. Are you, did you say that you guys do 38 modules a year? However are, many there are, we do like all Or do the you just do the required ones? No, no, we try to do all of them. So Greta, how many we do your year? 32 yeah, like or something? 34, 32, 34. Yeah. Yeah, so we try to get all of them done because the kids like to win. And that's why we do the one day. So like someone mentioned a kid missing a meeting. If a kid misses a meeting, we do try to find a way for the kid to meet the module so that all of our teens that attend teen conference have done all of the modules. Wow, that's awesome. Any other questions regarding the modules? And says you have a question about modules, don't you? <laughs> no. Uh, well, other than, you know, we'd like to start planning them as soon as possible because we will be doing, or our, our goal right now is to uh, do a, a camp, a camping retreat in September, which we plan to work on modules at that time. Um, but we don't know what they're going to be because it seems that they've changed this year. The requirements have changed, but we don't have any information as to what the changes are and what's required. Hmm. Okay. Have you guys heard anything, Chloe or Cynthia, about that? Changes? That's always my concern. We never know what's required, um, you know, which ones they're going to pick until you've already done your planning. So it's always pretty much yeah. like for us. Okay. Okay. Isn't there yeah. always so a financial one every year though? Is that true or no? Yes. There's, yeah. sure. There's usually always a financial, a leadership. Um, what's the other one? There's like three that they have all the time. Mm -hmm. they, maybe it's goal setting because I've done that about 10 times. So maybe that's <laughs> always there too. All right, so why don't, why don't we switch gears to fundraising? What kind of fundraising do yeah, you guys do? I think we do. I'm sorry? Okay. What, what type of fundraisers have you all done? I know, Toy, you talked about the 50-50. And can you give them an idea of how much your teams um, raise in a year's time? Oh, gosh. Um, I, I, I was, I took the award downstairs, um, but so our kids do fundraisers throughout the year. They do the 50, 50, um, at the Christmas party. They usually do something. Sometimes it's a 50, 50. Sometimes it's just a contest boys against the girls or something at black history month. And then they plan a party. And so they do the central Jersey takeover party every year in the spring. And um, they, you know, invite their friends from other chapters. Other chapters bring in car loads of the last time we had bus loads of kids. And that is their large fundraiser. It's their signature event. Now, this year's president, who happens to be my son, just told me he was, they're not having a party. So I don't know what that's about. Um, last year, they actually did the party with another chapter. And so there's a smaller chapter that neighbors our chapter in a neighboring county, and they only had seven teens last year. And so we partnered with them, and the teens had a party together. But our kids always do a party. They make, how much did they make that year? 17, 7, 13 or something? They made $600 less than COPA. That's all I can remember. That's a, that's a lot. That's five yeah. digits to the left of the decimal. It's, it's a big number. Yes, it is. And a big that's number. just in one, that's one fundraiser. And then the other two small fundraisers, they also make money there. Black history, you said, and yeah. So usually at the Christmas party um, on the 50, 50, it's usually about a thousand dollars. They usually clear anywhere from four to $500 for the teens. And Black History Month, they usually make anywhere from three to five hundred dollars as well. Um, on the, and the way we the way we do their fundraising is boys against the girls, and so they're extremely competitive to get things done and to um, you know to sell tickets or to do the fifty fifty whatever it is. We put a contest inside of you know the teen group so that it motivates them to sell. And I think one year, for example, whoever um, 
did not sell the most tickets had to cook dinner for the opposing gender. So that was yep. funny to watch those boys <laughs> cook for those girls that year. Um, That's fun. <laughs> Cynthia, what about you? So we unfortunately do not have a signature event. It's pretty much up to um, the team, the second vice president who's uh, in office that year. So some years, you know, that person works a little bit more and we make a little bit more money. But just this past year, um, we at the Jack and Jill Day in September, you know, we had a picnic and the teens sold, it was, luckily it was hot that day, they sold Rita's Italian ice. So, you know, that was $5 a pop. They made a couple hundred dollars just selling Rita's at an event where everybody was. They did that in September. Then they had a private showing of Harriet the movie. So they made a couple hundred dollars off of the Harriet movie, um, private screening. At Christmas, they worked with uh, Honey Baked Ham and sold gift cards. They made a little bit of money off of the gift card selling of Honey Baked Hams at Christmas. And just like Central New Jersey, we do a 50-50 uh, raffle at our holiday party. And usually we don't do too much in the spring. They may have a couple of uh, fundraisers at restaurants, like they do one with Chipotle, where they give you a portion of the proceeds raised. Uh, they do that a couple times in the spring. So we have a bunch of little fundraisers that bring just a little bit of dough. It's not a big, big thing, but they're you know working together and trying to raise money. Love it. So the next um, area that um, was on the list is just in terms of engagement. And um, this is something that we talked about a little earlier. And I think Cynthia, you may have mentioned with, you know, trying to get the guys engaged, the girls are gonna, they typically sort of do it just because. Um, but what are, how would you sort of gauge the temperature of your senior team group? And what are some things that you all have seen that works well? in terms of getting them engaged and excited to participate in the activities month after month? One thing I'll say is technology. These, the kids, um, I think we fought against it for a long time, but they finally got it. Like they have a group me or WhatsApp or one of those and they are all in it. And so they're talking all the time. Um, it has helped tremendously with inclusion of everyone in it. So if a movie's coming out, if it's whatever they're doing and they're talking about it, they're in there um, communicating together. So technology is a lot of that. And then the importance of, I, I mean, if there's one thing I would stress is the importance of time together that's not scheduled. That's why we started, stop doing like the other kind of act, Activity thing and just started okay you have your meetings you have to do your modules and after that you guys just get to chill and hang out and and do whatever um, and just that time together that's unstructured is is really important uh, for them so that's how we keep them engaged as far as the imbalance I, I'll tell you it's not a quick fix for you guys now, certainly not. But many years ago, when I was vice president, we started doing forecasting. And there was a huge, this year in our group, there should have been only five boys. But back then they were in the sixth grade and we saw it. And so the way that we keep our age groups balanced is through intake. We only take in people with certain age group um, kits. That's the recommendation. So. For instance, this year we brought in six new moms. All of them had to have at least one child from kindergarten to second grade um, whenever we see gaps. So there was a point in time, probably Greta, what, for probably two or three years, we mm -hmm. only brought in people that had boys. If you had girls, you just, you couldn't get in. And it was tough and it was, there were some arguments, but it was what was best for the health of the chapter. That makes a lot of sense. Cynthia? Yep. So one thing we do, we kind of try and um, just provide, you know, programming and activities that they can't get anywhere else so that they want to come. So you got to look for, you know, things that the teens want to do uh, in terms of activities and bringing them together, um, because that makes a difference. If you, you know, do something, you know, you know, they know that they're all going to go to the Hampton Howard game 
or, you know, they're, they're going to do something that they can't do, you know, at any other time. So it's all, it, that's the key. It's basically to provide things that they want to do together. And, you know, you've got to work on just bringing them together so that they know each other and they want to be around each other. That's, you know, hard. And that starts, you know, when they're younger. So, you know, in terms of the bonding and um, you got to provide ways for them to bond because there are people in our chapter, there are people coming in, there are people moving, you know, you'd be surprised uh, people, new people coming into the senior team group. So you got to provide ways, you know, in the beginning, like a retreat for them to get to come, to get to know each other. This year we have one team coming in. Last year we had a team coming in. So you don't want anybody, we don't want anybody to fall through the cracks. So you got to provide ways for them to spend time with each other, to get to know each other um, so that they want to be around each other because they have other options, you know, on a Sunday afternoon. So you got to make Jack and Jill one of those options that, 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 that they want to do. And we also have a group meet. The kids do like, um, you know, sharing information with, with each other on the group meet. And then the executive board is separate. They have the teen executive board have their own separate, um, they just text, but the whole chapter uh, team group uses group me so that they stay connected. I think this is a, um, we have a big opportunity here to kind of figure this out for our chapter. A lot of our kids in the teen group have been, you know, in Jack and Jill for a while. We have a, a couple that are newer, but creating that connection amongst them all is something that we really need to try to force in a creative way. Um, very similar to probably the way that you would do it in corporate America when you're doing um, a warm up or something that gets people who wouldn't normally talk to each other to talk to each other. Because what I see happening in our group is you've got an older set of teens, they're comfortable with each other, then sometimes the younger teens don't feel as comfortable with those older teens. You've got quiet teens who are intimidated by people who are a little bit more outgoing. So when we do retreats and things, they don't necessarily mesh together. Um, and then the other thing that has happened is that we have, um, our kids were on Snapchat and not all of the kids have Snapchat. I was a parent who kind of, you know, avoided Snapchat for as long as I could, um, which kept my children kind of out of the chatter that is the bonding experience. So I, just for you know, our San Diego folks, I think we have to find a way to create this. And I love what you guys are doing with your meetings where you just have free time that they can figure out how to you know, connect together. Yeah, I think something you said, we, we've had probably, I don't know how many years ago, five or six at this point, where there was this kind of schism in the group. And one of the things we started doing was being very strategic about how we assigned work, like for teen conference and those things. So you give the kids, allow the kids to choose some things, like everybody break off and, you know, everybody breaks off in their crew. But then when it came to planning for teen conference, we got very specific about mixing up the groups of kids who were working on the scrapbook, who were working on apparel so that they got a chance to talk to each other and meet with each other the the and so they get to know each other in that way the other thing is i cannot tell you how enough how much bonding they get to do when they're planning this party because i don't <laughs> care what kind of teen you are i don't care if you're an athlete i don't care if you're a scholar i don't care who you if you're a teenager you want to have a good party and i watch them really come together and plan that party and they had the same goal and everybody brought you know all their different friends with them and that was huge for us bringing them together the third thing that was um i think very impactful was find out who those leaders are when you're looking at your groups not necessarily the officers find out who those people are that are running things and have a conversation with them about, hey, here's what I need you to do. So one of my years, there was a young man that was teen president and I asked him to run. I said, you know, I, I, I need you because I see you talking to everybody. I see you interacting with everybody. That's what we need. So, you know, the kids are ready for that. Those older kids, they know how to lead in a way that will be effective. And so they'll start to pull in those younger kids with them 
in these activities. But the party and the committees working together, giving them a common goal and mixing them up was so helpful. It's really good to know. Thank you. And I'll add with Toy, and I don't know how it is on the, in the um, far west region, but parties on the in the eastern region are a big deal among the team. And so one of the other things that we used to talk with our team mothers and just the personal belief is wanting to make sure that your teens are also getting the bigger picture of the gift of Jack and Jill. And that means taking them not only doing their San Diego, or, you know, your specific chapter things, but also taking them to surrounding Jack and Jill activities with other teens so that they really see that this is not just about the 20, however many kids that you have, you have a universe of teens to go from. So, you know, I'm, I'm a huge proponent of anywhere I can take these girls that have any Jack and Jill stamp on it, they were going. So I was a mama sitting in the parking lot, driving to Brooklyn from Princeton, New Jersey, you know, sleeping in the car because Starbucks closed at 10 so that they could go see the party. Part of it was just the bonding time of the drive from point A to point B. Part of it was they knew they had a party. So they, that, that, that their signature event was a party. So you want to go scout out other parties to get ideas on things, what worked, what didn't work, whatever. But it was also an opportunity for them to develop relationships with other kids in the broader Jack and Jill perspective. So, you know, don't undervalue or discount the benefit that comes with having your teens also experience Jack and Jill beyond your borders and, and realizing that there's actually an indirect help that that can bring to um, building that camaraderie. Um, what I'm going to do at this point, because we've kind of gone through and touched on some of the big buckets, but I want to sort of open it up and just let you guys talk, share ideas. I mean, you have these two brain children here um, with their experience. So, you know, what are some other questions that you have or thoughts that you have that you'd like to um, bounce off of them? You know, I, I wanted to ask, a, dig in a little bit more on the party aspect. Um, I could see that being something that our kids would really, really enjoy putting together too. Um, just um, wh where would you hold the party when you had it, when you have it? Yeah, so we used to hold it at Rutgers University. Rutgers is in our um, territory, in our geography. And we used to hold it in the student center at Rutgers University. I think they charged us, Greta, help me out, $500 or something. something. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're um, definitely under the room. Thousand. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and so we held it there. This past year, we held it at a um, country club. We couldn't get records. There was a scheduling conflict, and so we were at a uh, country club, and they enjoyed that. That was, uh, that was nice, and that was the one with the other chapter, so it helped geographically, but it's, you don't have to have it anywhere you know, fantastic. I mean, it's a kid's party. And so having on the college campus drew more kids from other areas because they were excited to go to a, a camp a party at Rutgers. But we also had one at, um, in a hotel. Was that the year after you, the, at, the, at, a, at a hotel in the ballroom. Uh, mm -hmm. So th that piece, I think, is... Um, you know, flexible because the kids can make it what it wants. But we, we were lucky because we, we got to have Rutgers. We used Rutgers University. And they have, you know, other chapters in our area. The one thing about being where we are in Columbia, Columbia is in between DC and Baltimore that they can, go, as Greta was saying, you can go to other chapter events. So um, other chapters in the area have them, you know, at hotels or community centers. Um, it just varies. Gyms. Mm -hmm. So I have a question regarding uh, getting your teens excited about participating in the oratoricals for every workday. What do you do to encourage them? So we have a gavel club. Um, I don't know if you guys started the gavel club. What was that last year, two years ago? Um, when we had this big push uh, from toast, uh, from National to do Toastmasters. So our chapter actually has its own affiliate chapter of the Gavel Club, kind of the junior Toastmasters. 
And those are the kids, we have a good, uh, good participation in that. And those are the kids that usually participate at cluster oratorical. We always have two or three kids that participated before we had gavel club. Um, but that's one of the places where the teen advisors, it's an activity. Like, so cluster is an activity. And so who's going to cluster? You And then once we decide who's going to cluster, who's going to represent us in oratorical? So we, we kind of don't give them a choice. <laughs> like somebody's got to do it, right? And then what happens is the kids then start to say, well, who's, who's the best person to represent the chapter? Oh, you're really good at that. And you're really good. And, and you'll, that's the way you do it. So, but you make it like, this is something that we have to do. This is a part of it. And so who's going to represent us? All right. Thank you. So we too have a, a gavel club. And unfortunately, a lot of the gavel club members are in our junior teen group. So we will see the fruits of our gavel club in a couple of years mm -hmm. uh, in terms of our oratorical participants. But we do have a couple of our teens that are already enthusiastic about um, presenting and uh, they have participated in the past. It's just, just their thing. Um, but, you know, Gavel Club was amazing um, for our, uh, has been amazing for our chapter. That's awesome. Other questions? Features or Francis? Oh, sorry, Francis. That's okay. I heard you guys mention that you still host um, the meetings primarily in your homes, even with the large amount of um, teens that you have? So we used to host the teens uh, at our home. So the past couple of years, we had to, we moved. So we host, this past year, they met at a fire hall. Um, and I think they've met there the past two years. So it should be interesting, you know, with COVID, I don't know if they're going to say, you know, half of the, the group can come. So you know, the fire hall right now for the fall is on hold, but in the past, the past two years, they we've hosted them at this fire hall. And then before that, it wasn't in private homes, even that large. But traditionally, even though we have 60 to 70 on the roster, probably only 30 actually come to those meetings in the homes. Yeah, so we yeah, I was just about to ask about that in terms of the, the participation at the meetings and at your activities. Would it be about the same ratio uh, with the attendance at the events as well? We yes. get about 70% of our kids. So we do get, um, like this year we had 32, and I don't think we had, this year we had 32 teams. And I don't think we had less than 25 kids at any meeting or activity. So we get pretty good activity um, with that. And it works in the house. We're, we're very informal in the meetings. Um, so we'll set up a table, like a long table for them to have a dais, but the rest of the kids are just wherever. So it's not, we're not formalized like mother's meeting. So that's why we have it at people's houses. Um, like we were talking about with uh, COVID-19, we just sent out a survey to, not we, they sent out a survey to us, teen moms, about uh, were we comfortable still meeting in homes this year? And so I'm not sure what that, um, what the result was. We may have to move to public place because of it, or to your point, split them up and have different meetings or virtual, but we've always met in, in homes. Well, I'm impressed because we used to meet in homes, but now that we have 20, we keep saying, oh, that's so many children, but that's nothing compared to, um, to what you guys have. So I don't understand why we, why we weren't doing that, but. Okay. And do you guys eat at your meetings? Do your we do. Okay. Yes, Because I'm like, that's the other thing is like, they eat, they order pizza, they do, like they have such a good time. So that helps them, you know, kind of draw in. Every year, and it's probably like this in every chapter, there may be one or two kids that just don't want to participate. Their moms love Jack and Jill, and they don't. It's usually someone who's been like that for a long Like, you have that, but for the most part, we have um, really good engagement with them because we, we do let them, we let them run it for the 
most part, like unless it's something really unreasonable, we try to let them do it. You know, we reasonably let them make mistakes. You know, when they're planning the party, they've made some mistakes um, and we've allowed that just so they could learn. I had a couple other questions. Um, so again, you know, we're fairly small. Um, so we don't have a parliamentarian. We don't have a corresponding secretary. Um, do you guys have that in, in terms of your teen officers? Do you have those positions? We do. We have yeah, we do not. Okay. And then um, do the moms actually do the scrapbook or do you guys allow the teens to actually do the scrapbooks? The teens do it in our chapter. In ours too. Okay. Yeah. They, the, the teens do all of it. They do um, all the, especially the preparation, the banner, the, this, they, they do it. And we just kind of, you know, we're there to guide them, help ask questions. Um, but they decide, they decide their apparel to my chagrin every year, <laughs> you know, <laughs> they decide that we let them do it. You know, we, this is their thing. And, 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 um, our, you know, we're always communicating to them that they're learning how to lead and that when they leave Jack and Jill, we're poising them to be leaders on campus so they can go on and be in student government and all kinds of other things. We teach them like how to run a meeting, all of those things they learn. So we let them have as much flexibility as we possibly can, uh, which also helps with the engagement if they feel like we're just not doing everything and, and talking at them and those things. Yeah. Well, we allow them to do all the work as well, but then when they get to teen conference, they're always disappointed that they didn't win. And I know when I look at some of those exhibits that, that uh, from other chapters, that I know there's a lot of parent involvement. So I was just wondering. Oh yeah, we win modules, we don't win any of the other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we work so hard on the modules. We work on those modules, but yeah we're 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 yeah the our kids and our kids they're not so into that because they want to express themselves so if they feel like they were lit and express themselves whether they win or not they're they're okay with that part yeah we're definitely not in it to win it uh in terms of teen conference anything because there are uh 59 chapters in our regions it's mm. so competitive i mean some of these outfits that they come out with the banners it's unbelievable but in our chapter, as long as the kids are doing it on their own, you know, with our guidance, we let them do, you know, pretty much whatever they want to do. And that, you know, of course, it's always the same chapters in our region that win time and time yeah. again. So, <laughs> yes. it's never Columbia. <laughs> and, and then uh, my last question um, is about community service. So, Typically, where do you rank in terms of your community service hours, and do you do you win in that area? So we have won community service awards in the past. I cannot. I know when I was president, we did. I can't. Like I said, I've never been intentionally the teen advisor um, or assistant teen advisor, so I can't speak to like how many hours we have. We usually have maybe ten kids win the medal. Um, and then all of the kids do have community service hours and get a certificate in that because we have built in the community service within, you know, within the chapter activity. So all of our uh, chapter wide activities, we do a community service. And so the teens are involved in that. And then of course, MLK day of service, and then whatever the chapter uh, community service focus is. So they all do participate. And like I said, maybe 10 of them that do other stuff outside of Jack and Jill, those are the ones that are winning awards and stuff, winning the medals. Yeah. So, so then you typically, I'm, I'm sorry, and I, I promise this is my last question, but um, so then you typically don't do um, just extra activities. So for example, we have seven activities, but those, um, those will, are in addition to our meetings and addition to are all family activities. So you, it sounds like you don't typically have that many activities then. We don't, but I think Columbia, you do, right? Yeah, we do have activities. So for example, uh, in September, this past September, we participated, our teens participated in the St. Jude walk 
So, you know, that was an activity. In addition, they also got service hours and they, they donated money to St. Jude. And we also had our um, Jack and Jill Day in September. So each month there are two things on the team calendar. There's a meeting and an activity. Okay. Yeah, so we only have one. We only have one each month. Other questions? Well, oh, go ahead. Now, I was just trying to make sure if anybody else had any other questions. No? Angelita, anything else you wanted to cover while we were together? I think, um, I think that's it. I, I wanted to make sure that Frances, since she is our teen advisor, got all of her questions answered, and Tracy, who's our co-teen advisor. Um, and I think we were able to exhaust um, all of the questions. But I will, I know, I'm positive, that we will want to lean on you with answers to other questions because something will come up. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You have our contact information. And I'll be sure to forward that um, as you know, again, in case you need that. But I think all of us, and again, part of the reason why I ask these two ladies in particular, we are all about sharing and growing together. I mean, that is why we are in Jack and Jill. There is absolutely no reason why any chapter should be acting in isolation. There's too much uh, intellectual and creative capital that has been built up in this organization that we should not have any hesitation to reach out. And I think especially across regions because there's just so many amazing things that we are doing that there's you know why not pick up the phone and give somebody a call and try and have you know whether it's as formal and this isn't even formal as this or just a FaceTime or a call so anytime um, Angelique if you ever need and again Vanessa gives her her regrets that she could not be here but they are in uh, Vanessa is the uh, South Central Regional um, secretary and they are in the throes of a week-long virtual team conference but she also said that after this is done um, that she's more than happy to you know make herself available to you as well if you guys ever need it thank you so much thank you so much for time to meet with us we know it's late there <laughs> actually very enlightening I think we learned so much um, and, and lots of things that we can take back to our chapter. And Angelique, before we um, end the call, because um, I don't know how many of the, I know Toy and Cynthia know, but first of all, I'm from Louisiana, so we believe in just giving gifts and a little extra something, something. And number two, I work with a jewelry company called Stella and Dot. And so I was sitting here thinking that, wait, I didn't give away anything. And so before we end, um, I'm just going to do a totally just off the top of my head little um, thing. But what I just did in the chat, I just sent my um, cell phone number. And I'm sorry, Toy and Cynthia, you are not allowed to participate in this. Um, but <laughs> what I'm going to do is you guys will write down my cell phone number. And the question that I want you to answer is um, earlier in the beginning, Cynthia, uh, Cynthia and Toy mentioned how many members are in their respective um, chapters. So to see who was paying attention, or at least gets the closest to the numbers that they told you, I am going to, and I'm going to show you these little earrings in honor of Jack and Jill. One is blush, the other one is actually pink and blue. And it's a two-way earring, so you can wear it as a stud or not. But I am going to give um, whoever answers the question correctly the number of mothers in the Central New Jersey chapter and the number of mothers in the Columbia, Maryland chapter. So whoever gets the closest for either one, I am going to uh, send you all just a little gift from me. Um, to say thank you for even trusting us with your time uh, to want to come uh, and hear what we had to share. So. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> All we have is you try. But Greta, I just want you to I already sent it. All right. All right. 
Greta's my mother's name, so I don't hear it very often. It's a beautiful oh, name, and you wear it well. She must be amazing. <laughs> wear it well. No, but thank you, you guys, Toy and thank Cynthia. You. Um, once again, I am just truly humbled. Um, you're being very kind in your words earlier on, but you have, again, no idea how much I absolutely adore um, and need you all in my life. So I'm just grateful that you would take this time out to come and share. And um, again, I hope that it was helpful for you all. And um, Angelina, I'll make sure that you um, have their contact information in case you have any other questions. Thank you, thank you. And thank Absolutely. you. Thank you so much. You're and thank so you, welcome. Angelique. Absolutely. For your vision, thank you. Everybody Bye. take care. Enjoy. Bye. 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 Bye.